Thank you very much. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Volker. I think it's become clear that Mercedes-Benz Vans is transforming, that it is moving beyond hardware, and that it has already been hard at work. Right. So I really encourage everybody to go into the Expo Labs to start realizing and understanding very concretely and specifically what you just outlined. Okay. But before we do that, we really wanted to give you the very first quick opportunity to address your questions to Volker because it's a real significant change and it's a big transformation and it's now your time to ask questions about what we just said. So we're going to do this the very regular way. We have colleagues with microphones running around. Please just raise your hand. Uh, would you be so kind to, to tell us your name and also your media and then we go. We start with Ed who has the award for the fastest hand today, Edward Taylor <laughs> from Reuters. Thank you very much. Number one. Good morning. Um, Edward Taylor from Reuters. I, aside from the new challenges posed by digitization on the uh, platform uh, situation, what is your view about the barriers to entry into the van business? We've seen some startups create vehicles that are directly competing with what would normally be a classic customer segment for Daimler. I'm thinking of Deutsche Post's street scooter, which they've set up on a fairly low budget and a, low, uh, a, low, a, a small team. What, what is that? Uh, what, what do you think about that? If a company can decide, I'd rather build my own van than go to someone like Daimler. I think one thing is pretty good on that planet. Everybody's free to do what uh, somebody would like to do. That's, uh, from my perspective, first of all, a very positive signal. But the same is, how should I say, um, counting for us. Therefore, I think you, you got a kind of a flavor what we would like to go for. Um, so far, we are, how should I say, um, developer and a producer and seller of uh, uh, bands. And now we are moving uh, to the next level, how we call it. Uh, we would like to provide our customers with holistic systems um, to give the best support uh, to their business, that they can be more efficient. Uh, than today. This is what we are heading for and at the final end I think it's great to have competition uh, because competition is always uh, driving our business forward. This was in the past the case and will be also the case in the future. Thanks Ed for that fast hand. Who's second? Right over here. Thank you very much. The microphone should be in place already. Yes, thank you. Johannes Stoffels for investors. I have uh, three small questions. Maybe can you, can you take the, the, the mic a little bit closer to your okay. mouth? Johannes Stoffels for investors. I have three small questions. You mentioned that you so far invested 500 million euro into your plans. How much more do you want to invest in it? Uh, which future revenues do you want to get out of it? Yeah. And can you give a kind of a timetable? When is this van going to be on the market? Thank you. Can you repeat us the, the third question? Uh, can you give a short timetable? When is the van going to uh, come into the market? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, your first question was regarding how much you would like to invest uh, above this 500 million, which I already mentioned. Uh, at the final end, I have to say it depends on the ideas we will have. You know, that's a kind of a start investment which we will do, uh, and this in this kind of startup mentality, which we implemented there, it's all about ideas. If there are much more ideas that we can invest first, okay, we have to think about uh, how much in good ideas we will invest more. It's all about uh, um, the ideas we have in place and how we can then attract with these ideas our customer, then for sure we will uh, spend more. Um, the second question was related to, uh, the third was uh, um, when we will um, bring the first um, ideas into the markets. Um, I think it's also in this kind of uh, um, um, technologies, it's a bit different as we do it in our, how should I say, core business when we develop cars and products. Um, in that kind of a business, we, from the first beginning, we are together with first customers and uh, in, in, in the way that we make pilots and we uh, check out and figure out how the first ideas are working. Um, in, in, in the real world and then it's a kind of a step-by-step -step approach. That means uh, with the first ideas we are in the market already and then when it is really, a, uh, we achieved a level of, uh, how should I say, uh, maturity, 
then we will go to the market. There is not a, a fixed uh, data which we have in mind. It's all, everything related to um, how successful we are on the way to develop from a first idea uh, to a, how should I say, a marketable uh, uh, product. And it's a step-by-step -step approach. Some of the stuff we might even see at later IAA. on in a, in, a, in a few minutes, and some of the stuff, right, we will show then on the AI in, in Hannover. Second question was last one. The second question. The second question was about the future revenue. revenue. Sorry, revenue. The the future revenue. Ah, so revenue. Ah, sorry, 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 that I forgot it. Um, yeah, that's a, a bit of the same. Normally, uh, in in our core business, we make business cases in very detailed, in a very detailed way, no question. But also in this new kind of a startup mentality where each idea has to come on the table and then we make some, some, some projects, we'll make some, some pilots, there we see then how successful the idea will be because it's a new field, it's a new era. Uh, if you're doing our, from the first beginning a business case, what might be the revenue then out of it, ah, at the final end maybe we will then stop a good idea because in the first glance, in the first step, it looks not that, that profitable. For sure, it might happen then on the way uh, after uh, uh, some, some milestones that we will see, okay, this was an idea which maybe which will fail because uh, at the final end, uh, it's difficult to, to handle it, uh, difficult to our customers finally to come to a, how should I say, efficiency approach, then okay, we, we, we stop it. But in doing that, we learn even more, maybe some new things, and then we can uh, boost forward so, some other ideas uh, kind of in a kind of a lessons learned uh, uh, methodology, methodology, and uh, that's how we work in that field. It's, it's different. It's different, to be honest, for us, because normally we are used uh, to work hardly on business cases, very tough projects, uh, but this is new in the, in the kind of a, a startup culture and startup methodology. Up front here. As we know, and listening to Gert's keynote earlier, um, thinking about Moore's law, where the processing power is doubling every 18 to 24 months, and when we look at the development cycle of a new car, which is kind of in between five to seven years, so how are you guys tackling that challenge that the developers and the engineers that you have are actually developing a car that will be outdated in about three or four years? To be honest, perfect question. <laughs> because this idea is within my team, you can say more or less each day on, on the table how we deal with it. Um, because in our core uh, business, um, especially, um, how should I say, the, the, the field of, of regulations, is that kind of tough, think about emissions, think about safety, think about quality, what the customers is expected uh, from our uh, vans. They, 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 expect always the best and, and our products has to work uh, 24 times 7. But uh, if we stick for that also in the, how should I say, new field uh, where we would like to act as, as a provider, um, then you are right, we will be always too late uh, because maybe some others, other guys, they will develop it uh, in a very short term notice and then we are, maybe we did it perfectly um, in, in three, four years, but we are convinced that other, other companies or other startups will do it in half a year or in one year. Maybe they are not that kind of 120% perfect, uh, but have a look on your smartphone, you know. You will get each week a kind of a release, new update. You are happy that you get that because you have always the feeling, ah, there is something new in. Maybe at the final end it is not 100% perfect, but you will get always something new. And this is how we have to organize our organization on one hand, we have really worked very precisely, very dedicated, um, because we have to be more than perfect. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we have a kind of a startup culture in our team, and this is what we as a management have to organize that we can deal in our organization with these kind of, you can say, two cultures. And in, in the future, I'm convinced that also our, our core business will maybe learn some stuff uh, uh, from these new guys in our organization with a new way uh, of thinking. But I think it will also go a little bit the other way around, that these new uh, guys will learn a little bit uh, what, what it means to uh, develop very sustainable. And, and therefore, I think at the final end, it will be a win-win, but you are totally right. Um, we have to, how should I say, or we will have two kind of speeds in our organization, you are right. 
Thank you, Sasha. Next question is over here, please. Thank you very much. Eduardo Gaspar from Automotive Portugal. Um, you have talked about a um, holistic system joining vans, um, drones, robots and people. And how about trucks? Are the fleet owners need to have two different systems? One for vans, robots and etc. And other for trucks? Or is it going to be everything united? Um, also, a good point. I think there are different opportunities. Uh, it depends on if you are really in the inner circle of a city, if you are in a suburban area, or when you are more or less, how should I say, uh, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, therefore, that means we will, and we have the chance to offer in the future uh, different mobility services. Uh, there are some ones they will stick to the vans. Uh, because maybe these are perfect for their, how should I say, daily business. But at the final end, uh, when it comes to efficiency and when it comes also to speed, because uh, maybe, as you know, some of these e-commerce companies, they would like to deliver within one hour. And then you have to find different opportunities that you can transport uh, the, the goods uh, then to their final end customers. Therefore, I think there will be a mixture uh, out of all these things what we are today will show to you, the van, uh, the, the robot systems uh, and, and the drones. And maybe at the final end, we will find something different uh, over the next uh, uh, weeks and months. You never know. But to some extent, it will be a mixture. Thank you very much. We've got time for a couple of more quick questions. One in the front line right here, please. Number three is coming up. Angus McKenzie from uh, Motor Trend. Uh, in your platform idea, there's a lot of hardware uh, i.e. the vans, sure. <laughs> who's going to own the vans? Will Daimler end up owning the hardware or will it be uh, individual contractors? How's that model going to work? Yeah. Now, I ha have to say over the last 100, roughly 30 years, we are used to sell our products or maybe we lease it uh, to, to our end customers. Um, that means that was a kind of a ownership philosophy. Uh, but what we saw over the last two to three years uh, that there is a bit of a change coming up uh, that customers, they don't would like to have the assets by them, especially maybe when they cannot afford it, as maybe I mentioned uh, in my presentation, or secondly, when they have to deal with uh, peak times and, and down times and this kind of things. At the final end, okay, we can say we don't would like to rent short-term rental maybe on an hourly base, or we would like to rent by use. If we don't we'll do that, I'm totally convinced somebody else will do it. Um, therefore, we um, um, developed in our organization an, org an, an, an process that we can deal with that in, in, in the future, because as I already said, we saw a kind of a move from uh, ownership to, to usage. And, and uh, that means finally uh, somebody can then really rent uh, a van from us um, maybe for one hour or for, 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 for one day. Pay per use, you, you can say. Yep, we will do that. Thank you, Volker. Let's go to the last question right here, please. And of course, there is a and lot. Maybe also there will come some more in Hannover. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hi there. My name is Sanjak from Habertuk, Istanbul. Uh -huh. uh, my question is about your staff. I mean, you already mentioned about your plans, about your future. But uh, in order to get this in place, you need lots and lots of uh, forward-thinking men and women. And uh, the question is, do you have them? And how many people are standing behind this advanced system as, as an idea? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, also a very good question, because at the first beginning, we thought, hmm, will we get uh, in this market as a, how should I say, old economy, <laughs> um, OEM, will we get this? And can we attract these uh, young people out there uh, in, in the US, in, in, in Berlin? Uh, for, for sure, we know that in Stuttgart we can get them. <laughs> um, so therefore, um, for us it was, uh, in the first step, a bit of a challenge. But in the meantime, I have to say, we, as the Mercedes-Benz brand, we have still a very, yeah, a very attractive brand out there and uh, with especially with this new kind of an approach that we 
uh, give these young guys a different opportunity. Um, for example, in the Silicon Valley, we hired people there. Uh, at our hub, we, in Berlin, for example, here in Germany, we built up uh, a new hub and this kind of a startup environment. And also here in Stuttgart, we really found these uh, people who are very keen um, to work in that direction um, because on one hand, they, they see that they can really work um, very agile. They can take decisions in a very short uh, period of time. They see uh, their success also within days, within weeks. Um, and this is what really attracted them for our company. And I can tell you, uh, we have these people on board. Um, for sure, we will hire also in the future even more of, of these uh, uh, guys, of these digital natives. Um, um, it was not that difficult as we thought at the beginning. Roughly, we have now roughly uh, 200 people uh, in our organization, as I said, um, in these three locations uh, who are working um, um, in that field, in this advanced field, and generate uh, each day new ideas. And, and you will see these guys, ask them later on, uh, how, uh, how should I say, satisfied they are to work uh, within our Mercedes-Benz Vans organization for this task. Ask them. Okay. Thank you, Volker. Thanks for the opportunity to tell that story um, together with you and your team about the transformation of Mercedes-Benz vans. Uh, I want to uh, give some more housekeeping remarks. You can take your seat. Thank you very and much. We will see you later. Thank okay. you very much. See you later. Yeah.